What's up? It's Real Touch ML here. I have a quick announcement before the video starts, and it's kind of a sad announcement. I'm sorry to tell you guys, but I was defragging my entire computer, uh, you know, get everything cleaned up. It was very messy, and guess what? I ended up taking out the actual file for this game. So I'm sorry to I'm I'm sorry, but you know. <laughs> If I could take it back, I would. So, this is going to be the last video. I'm sorry again, but tell me what you think about that in the comments. I don't know if, if I should start up another series or something. I'm not sure. But, yeah, just let me know and enjoy the video. All right. What is going on, guys? Real to the deal, to the touch, to the GML here. Back with another Java tutorial. And today we're going to be doing actually a couple of things. So, if we play our game now. As you can see, we have some spaceships, and we can shoot our bullet, and basically they just fall to the bottom of the screen. Now, I've actually got an idea for this game, and it's going to be that one spaceship spawns, right? And it keeps going down, and if it gets to the bottom of the screen, it will loop back up to the top. Now, that will be level one. When you shoot that spaceship, that spaceship will explode, and it will create two, two uh, spaceships at the top of the screen. And then when you kill both of those, It'll turn into level three, and three spaceships will come down from the bottom, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and their speed will increase, and all of that stuff, and it will just be glorious. So that's my idea for the game. Uh, and we can start that now by going up into the controller and only spawning one enemy. <clears throat> so get rid of that for loop, and I'm just going to say 100. So now if we played our game here, as you can see, only one enemy spawns. There is one problem here though. If we play it again, the enemy spawns in the same place. And if the user knows this, and the the user is familiar with the game and played it a lot, he's gonna know after a while where each one spawns in like in every wave and stuff. So that actually is not a good method of doing it. So we're gonna be using uh, the random uh, function, which is in the utilities library. So I'm gonna say random r equals new random and control shift O to import that <clears throat> and as you can see it's in the util and basically what that allows us to do is get random numbers so instead of 100 all we have to do is say r dot next int and then in the parentheses here we're gonna say game uh, game dot width times game dot scale So basically, this is going to return a number of uh, between 0 and our room width. So if we play the game, as you can see, he's on this side. The, the enemy starts on that side. If we play it again, now he's on that side. So, so it, it's very random, which is what we want in a game. We don't want it to be the same thing over and over and over again. So now what we have to do is make it so that when our enemy or spaceship gets to the bottom of the screen it spawns back up to the top now I'm gonna take a second I'm you know what you pause the video right now if you've been following along and I want you to try and figure it out real quick just try and figure it out real quick now I'll give you a hint it can be done in either the enemy class or the controller class so pause the video real quick right now okay hopefully you're back and hopefully you figured it out if you didn't pause it, then shame on you. Uh, <laughs> but hopefully you figured it out. If not, I'm going to show you right now to see if you were correct or if there's a better way of doing it. So I'm going to show you both ways in the controller and the enemy. So if we went in the controller here in the tick method, all we would need to say is if temp enemy dot, and we actually, uh, no, okay, in our enemy, we have to create a getter. So public int, or I'm sorry, public double get x, return x, and we call that method and returns, oh, I'm sorry, y. And then in the controller, dot get y is greater than game dot height times game dot scale, temp enemy dot and we'd have to set y to zero um, and then we'd have we'd have to create create a setter for that so 
public void set y double y this dot y equals y I went over setters in the previous tutorial but there we go so now if you played the game that should work and that is a good method of doing it nothing wrong with that so as you can see and it's back up to the top now another way of doing this we if we go into the enemy class which I think is a bit easier and a bit, bit more logical in in your eyes is in the tick method just say if y is greater than game dot height times game dot scale y equals zero and that of course will do the same thing so it'll go from the top and when it reaches the bottom it should go back up to the top there we go now we do get a small problem here that when it does reach the bottom it's still in the same location and I don't really want that if you want that in your game go ahead and leave it but I'm just gonna make it be random again so what I'm gonna do is import the random function against so random r equals new random control shift o to import it and then x equals r dot next int game dot width times game dot scale and now that should go ahead and make a random x location for when the spaceship spawns again Yep, there we go. So go leave a like, go and subscribe. Stay tuned for our next tutorial. Next tutorial, I think we're actually going to be getting into collisions like shooting our, our spaceship with our bullet or the spaceship colliding with the player, maybe putting a health bar in there, maybe a level system. I don't know. Those are some things that are going to happen, so let me know in the, in the comments. And let's try and get this up to 15 likes. Uh, I, I do appreciate every like that I get, and it does give me satisfaction for making these tutorials and wanting me to make more tutorials. So I will see you guys next time. Peace.